Dance music is the most potent force in youth culture. Rave music, dance music, has become the alternative music of America. Rave to me is more than just a word. It's a subculture, it's a lifestyle. Rave is a way of life. Go out all night and then you sleep all day, then go out all night and sleep all day. Whenever I try to explain raves to older people, like to like my parents or something like that, they're like, I always just say that it's kind of like a club, but it's mm -hmm. underground. But like that's all you can explain us. Underground? Like, what do you mean underground? Is it like underground <laughs> no. building? So what? Basically a rave, it's an illegal place or in a warehouse place outside of the corporate clubs. A bunch of friends and promoters get together with DJs and musicians in a warehouse or in a place and party all night. This is how us Americans party. Crystal meth, special K, and the best of them all. Only in this country. Ecstasy. When any news program says, on Wall Street today, the world listens and listens closely. Trillions of dollars change hands on Wall Street each year with a shout, a point, a scribble, and a touch of a keyboard. In the 1920s, financial journalist Edwin Lefebvre offered timeless advice to investors. Nowhere does history indulge in repetition so often or so uniformly as in Wall Street. The game does not change, and neither does human nature. For more than 200 years, men, and more recently women, have come to Wall Street to buy, sell, and haggle. They've not always done so politely, or sometimes even honestly. But in pursuing their own self-interest, they made Wall Street the greatest creator of wealth ever seen. I'm Sue Herrera, and this is The Great Game. CNBC presents The Great Game, the story of Wall Street. on the rollerblade, the first feeling that you have as you get to speed is very much like flying. And as you get to 60, 65 miles an hour, the air becomes quite thick and quite warm. And uh, the faster you go, the better it feels. Tim McVeigh, small town boy and good soldier, to Timothy McVeigh, convicted mass murderer, death row resident, and even would be political analyst, McVeigh has worn many faces. Oh, I think if we had stayed here, if there, this area has been kind of depressed as far as employment goes, and I think if he had been able to find a decent job that paid well, I mean, all I know about him is this would never have happened. I, I think the crossroads things earlier than that. <clears throat> I think it's the fact that he didn't go to college. Yeah. I truly think that if he had um, studied something that he really liked, that he, he would now be a teacher, engineer. I think that Tim McVeigh had uh, a certain predisposition to being, uh, to being kind of a lone wolf soldier and to being a man who could send on a mission. 
And I think that his particular fascination with weapons kind of spiraled into a, a situation where he became an expert more and more, a loner, a professional commando, and that this, uh, in the right situation, could have served the U.S. government quite well. He could, he could have been a leader of soldiers. He could have been uh, a, a very strong uh, teacher of other soldiers. And I believe what really happened is that he switched sides. I feel that the groups that want to be separated should come together as separatist groups and fight together to be separate. I do believe that we should be separated. And I don't think that I need to get together with somebody who killed my brother in order to get that point across. Today is show people that there is a working relationship developing across the country and around the world between separatist groups. It was quite disturbing to our enemies uh, to see uh, a radical black group and a radical white group standing together saying the same thing. We might want to uh, move the press conference down closer to the crowd. spine because it plays a very major role in the financial district, in the village district, in the theater district, which we all know about and think of as Broadway, and then even going up past Lincoln Center and way up into Harlem. So Broadway is one of the few streets that really covers almost every section and socioeconomic group in New York. Partially Spanish, Jewish, Irish, Polish, what I like to call a melting pot within a melting pot. Broadway's essence is not easily captured, its meanings many. One thing is certain, through all the long years, the street has somehow gained a soul, a life of its own, and it will speak to those who know how to listen. A turn-of-the-century observer once wrote, sometimes, on wintry afternoons, when hurrying faces are muffled in furs, and the lights in the shop windows make brave play on such satins and jewels as are left, some of us feel a tug at our heartstrings. And then, if we are quick to understand its sign language, we know that Broadway is telling us that it still remembers. dream you know everybody has a dream in their life and when you conquer that like going from a man and finally becoming a woman you know once that's done what else is there to do I mean I just hope you know that she'll be happy that's the, that's the you know and she's proven it to me so far I could be anything I want to be I could be a he I could be a she I could be anything you have to be there you have to be there to get a beating you know it, it, it could be anything. It could be as, as much alcohol I had in me, as high as I am, or as stupid as you are. It could go both ways, man. I, one day, may, I might be wrong. I see you smile, and my heart skips a beat. The reason why there does need to be a different rodeo is because if any of these people walked around hand in hand with someone of the same sex, they'd be trashed. I mean, if that's reality. The places that people live, that these homeless people live, uh, are as, as diverse as the people themselves. I've been existing in this environment for eight years now. The decision uh, 
to live here really is one of, of total surprise. This is a complete and total surprise for me myself because I, my last living existence here in New York City was a penthouse apartment. And uh, to go from that to this, one would say, wow, man, that, that's quite an adjustment. But uh, I truly believe this is the greatest thing I've ever done in my life because I've dared to be myself completely and totally against all the odds. And in truth, nobody else does it like me down here. I am indeed the Lord of the Tunnel. My friends and I started with a, a homemade Ouija board, if you will. We took a piece of paper and a wine glass because we wanted to talk to a spirit that was living in my friend's house. And I think because of our openness and the purpose of what we were doing was of love and it was very positive, the angels started coming through and talking and gave us beautiful, loving messages. It's changed their life. Very profound messages, too. So I decided to make a board and get it to people. Are you Jason's angel? Yes. OK. Do you have a message for Jason today? I'm for exterminating all non-European races, but that's not reality. What I would do right now in this day and age, I'd like to send every single race that isn't of European descent back to their own country, and then in time figure a way to rid the world of those who were not European. You know, hey, everybody's got a dream.